Hi there. In today's video, we are going to talk about predicting products of chemical reactions, and that's where we examine the reactants to determine the products that we would expect to form from that type of reaction. I have five steps that I like to teach when we do these basic five uh, different reaction types. So uh, these are steps you'd want to summarize and be able to use uh, from, from memory. So our first step would be to determine the reaction type, looking at the reactants that we have. And then for single and double replacements, it's important to check and make sure that those reactions do indeed go to completion. Recall that double replacement, you need to either make water, a gas, or a precipitate. And for single replacement, the lone element needs to be more active than the uh, like particle that's trying to replace in that reaction. We have a resource, our gold sheet, that we can use to help us with both of those. After you've determined your reaction type, there are specific reaction patterns that we've talked about. Um, in, previous, in previous discussions, you need to use those reaction patterns and form the simplest products, which means you're going to drop subscripts unless they are part of a polyatomic ion like nitrate, NO3, or phosphate, PO4. Our third step would be to write good formulas for ionic compounds. That means checking your charges and, if need be, crisscross those charges into subscripts, reduce, reduce those formulas down if need be. And then finally, or excuse me, step four, write your diatomics. If we have diatomic elements like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, etc., those, if they are elements written by themselves, they would need to have the subscript too. And finally, you're going to balance your chemical equation using coefficients so that we follow the law of conservation of mass matter. I have some examples of how to do this. So the first example problem is H2O. That is one reactant. So if I go through my steps, that means that I have a decomposition reaction. In my reaction uh, pattern, step uh, number two is to uh, follow the reaction pattern. Decomposition A, B turns into A plus B. But I need to do the simple. So it's just going to be hydrogen plus oxygen. I'm dropping this subscript 2. That 2 will not cross the arrow because this is not part of a polyatomic ion. Step number 3 is to check my charges on ionics. Neither of these are ionics because they're both elements by themselves, so they must be elements. And then 4 would be to look and see if these elements happen to be uh, diatomics, and both of these are. So these both require a subscript 2. And then finally, balance this chemical equation, and I will do that using coefficients, starting with my most difficult looking formula. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen, two oxygens. So I need to double my oxygens on the left. I'll do that with a coefficient two, but that affects this hydrogen. So now I need to double this one to get up to four. So that's the first problem. The second problem, I have two reactants. I have one ionic compound and one element. So if I went through my series of questions, I know it's not decomp, I know it's not combustion, I know it's not double replacement. It looks to be single replacement because I have an ionic with an element. So in this case, single replacement, the reaction pattern is find the element and see what it's going to replace. It's going to replace something similar to it. Now Br is a nonmetal, so it's going to try to replace the nonmetal and the ionic, which is iodine. I need to make sure that this reaction will go to completion, and I can use my activity series resource, and I see that bromine is indeed more active than iodine. Again, a more active replaces a less active for single replacements. So iodine and bromine are going to trade spots. So that means that I need to write K. Instead of having I behind it, I need to have bromine behind it. Notice I don't bring my subscript 2 across because this is not polyatomic ion and then I need to have iodine by itself. So on the left side, bromine plays the role of being by itself. Iodine is stuck. On the right side, they need to trade roles. Bromine is stuck. Iodine is by itself. My third step is to check charges. K is a plus 1. Br is a minus 1. So I don't need to do any crisscrossing on that formula. My fourth step is to look for elements. This element is on Hunkelbrift. That's the I in Hunkelbrift. So I need to do a subscript 2. And then my fifth step is to balance this thing. Start with your most difficult looking formula. These two formulas are similar difficulty. 1K, 1K, 1I, 2Is. So I need to multiply this K. And then I need to multiply this one because I just doubled my Ks. Two bromines, two bromines. So we are 
are good to go there. All right, my third example problem, I have uh, more complicated looking formulas going on here. So um, to me, uh, I know it's not one reactant because I see a plus sign. My second question is, is O2 a reactant? No. My third question, are both reactants ionic? That's ionic. That's ionic. So this is going to be a double replacement reaction. Double replacement, the cations trade places. The cations are almost always the first element in that formula. So Na and Pb trade places. And then uh, the simple product is to write down Na. And it's going to sit in front of what Pb was sitting in front of, which is NO3. But I need to only keep subscripts that are part of polyatomic ions. This 3 is part of the polyatomic ion. This 2 is a part of crisscrossing the formula, so we don't need to keep that 2, but we do need to keep the 3 because it's part of nitrate. And then my second product is going to be Pb in front of I. Now for double replacement, we also need to make sure that these go to completion, and we're going to do that by using the other side of our gold sheet. Now, NaNO3, you uh, should learn that sodium and nitrate are almost always aqueous, so these are probably going to be an aqueous product. And then uh, Pb and I, well, which lead do we have? Pb plus something. Um, nitrate's minus one. There's two copies. This is lead plus two. And then iodide. So we're going to use our gold sheet to figure this out. So I need to find lead 2, that's the one that our gold sheet happens to have, and I'm going to find iodide. It says that iodide and lead make a precipitate. So I'm going to just draw a down arrow right here. So that means this reaction goes to completion. Had this product also been aqueous, I would have just said no reaction, cross these out. Um, for double replacement, sometimes it's easier to check if they go to completion after you've written down the products, which is kind of step 1 and step 2 kind of meshed together. Step three, check your charges. Plus one, minus one, that's a good formula. Lead, we already decided was lead two. Iodide's minus one, so I need to crisscross, put a subscript two right here on the back end of iodide. Then I need to do uh, step four, look for elements. I don't have any elements, I only have compounds here. So then step five, I need to look for um, balancing this thing. <clears throat> My most difficult looking formula, I would say, is right here. One lead, one lead, you're good to go. I have two nitrates, so I need to multiply. Um, then I have a two in front of sodium, so I need to put a two in front of sodium right here. And then I need two iodides. Well, I already have two iodides, so we're good to go. The fourth example problem, I have lithium and oxygen. So going through my questions, I have... Uh, more than one reactant, so it's not decomp. One of my reactants is O2, so it might be combustion, but the other reactant is uh, just a single atom. It's not carbon and hydrogen, so it's not going to be combustion. Then I don't have two ionics. I do have an element, I have a second element, so it's not single replacement, which means that this should be synthesis. The sy synthesis reaction pattern is A plus B turn into AB. Remember when you write down formulas, metals go first. Whoops. Start writing A. So I'm going to write down lithium, and then with an oxygen on the back end, this 2 does not cross the arrow because that 2 is not part of a polyatomic ion. Step number 3 is to check charges on ionics. Lithium is a group 1, so it's a plus 1 ion. Oxide is a group 6, so it's a minus 2 ion. So I need to crisscross. If you're using pencil, you should erase those. And then I now need to balance this thing. I don't have any elements, so I don't need to worry about Hunkelbrifts. This is already Hunkelbrift for me. So lithium, uh, there's two copies, so I need to put a two here. But then oxygen, there's one copy, so I need to put a two, because there's two oxygens here, I need to put a two in front of the lithium. But then that doubles my lithium, so this two needs to turn into a four. And again, if you're using a pencil, you should erase that. Um, if I were to have more time, I would just wipe that out and replace that with the 4. Okay, the final reaction um, is this one that has a big old carbon-containing molecule and then oxygen as the second reactant. So my first question is, is this decomp? No, because there's a plus sign. My second question is, do I see O2? Yep. 
And do I see a CH containing compound? Yep. So this is going to be combustion. The reaction pattern for combustion is always write down CO2 plus water. And we do that for our class. Our class, um, that's how we do our combustions. We always have full combustion reactions in our class. Now, you get to skip steps three and four because these are automatically the products. We're not going to do any crisscrossing or looking for Hunkelbrifts on this. We're going to go straight to balancing. Now, when you balance combustions, this is kind of a special pattern. You want to do carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, chill order. So we have two carbons. We need to multiply the CO2 by two. I'm going to come back into the left and count all of my hydrogens. I have five. I have one, so that gives me six. So I need to multiply water by three. And then what I suggest you do is write down your number of O's underneath the two products on the right-hand side. Two times two gives me four. Three times one gives me three. And then together, that equals seven. So then on the left-hand side, all together I have to have seven. So I'm going to write my seven right here. Now, we don't want to put a coefficient in front of this, so let's just count how many O's we have. One plus the number x. So 1 plus x equals 7. What's x to make that happen? So x has to equal 6, so that is going to be a 3 times 2 gets me to 6. So that being said, that was an example of how we use our five steps for predicting products of chemical reactions. Um, what you should have learned from watching this video are those five steps and how to apply them to the five different reaction types making sure to uh, follow those five steps religiously while you're going through those steps. I hope that helps, and uh, good luck on these.